in the last video we had a brief introduction to the equation of a line and in this video we're going to have a look at what the equation of a line can tell us about that line in particular so normally the equation of a line we always try to get it in the form of y is equal to something times x plus c where c is a constant okay so when you have the equation of a line and it's y in terms of everything else the coefficient or the constant in front of the x that represents the slope of the line and the constant here by itself that represents the y coordinate of the y intercept so that all seems very abstract at the moment so maybe we'll have an example of what lines we looked at in the last video um, so in the last video we had a line y is equal to 2x plus 5 and we had a look about what that meant for the points on the line so we said that for each x coordinate you had you doubled it you add, added 5 and that got you the y coordinate so we said that every point on that line satisfied this equation okay so when you subbed in the x value of each point you got the y value out and if you didn't it meant the point was not on this line okay as you can see this this equation of this line here is in the form of y is equal to mx plus c so if we compare the two okay the y is the same so that's just on the other side of the equation but if we look at 2x and mx right the x corresponds to the x so that just means that the coefficient of the x is equal to m the slope so that means the slope of this line m is equal to 2 and then if we have a look at this constant 5 that is equal to the c in this form of the equation of the line which is a constant okay and that represents the y-intercept so the y-intercept is where your line cuts the y-axis okay so in this case it cuts the y-axis for this line at 0 0.5 that is your y-intercept okay and you only have that when x equals 0 okay so even if you look up at this formula here when x equals 0 right that completely disappears and I get y is equal to 5 so that's where that point comes from Okay, so this is quite a bit abstract because we're just looking at a formula. So let's look at this plotted. So this is the same one that we had in the last video and we looked at some of the points. So this is the same line plotted on a coordinate plane. So this blue line here is the line y is equal to 2x plus 5. Okay, we'll come back to the slope in a minute. We'll keep looking at the y-intercept, right? When x equals 0 you're neither going right nor left along the x-axis you can only go up and down the y-axis so when x equals zero you're dealing with a y-intercept you're dealing with where the line cuts the y-axis and you can see from the diagram that it cuts the y-axis at this point here zero five which is what we anticipated from the formula okay Likewise, if we have a look at the slope of this line, and let's say we'll use our rise over run method. So m equals rise over run, which we discussed, right? In the last, in one of the other videos. If we start here and we go across and up like that, so this here, is my rise and this here is my run okay my run is two squares in length or we could go with the formula where we take the x values away from each other so that would be three minus one so my run is two squares in length so three minus one two okay whereas my rise is one two three four squares in length 
or again if you want to have a look at using numbers it's 11 minus 7 which is 4. Okay so using the rise over run method I've calculated that the slope is 4 over 2 which is equal to 2 which is as we predicted from the equation. Okay let's have a look at a different example. So actually I'll keep this page for a minute. Okay, so this was the other example we had from the last video as well, where we were dealing with a negative slope. You can see that from the diagram. So the equation of this green line here is y is equal to minus 3x plus 1. Okay, and we need to figure out what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. Okay, now the slope, as I said before, it's the value in front of the x, or it's the coefficient of the x. That's this number here. So we have that m is equal to minus 3. That is your slope. Be careful, that minus goes with it. Okay, so it's the coefficient in front of the x, be it positive or negative, that sign comes with it. Okay, and you can see from the diagram as well that it has a negative slope. Okay, and if we were to work it out, if we were to rise over run again. So let's see if we start here, go up. Okay, my run there. My run there is just one square. And my rise is one, two, three squares. So it's three over one, which is three. So it's slope of three. Likewise, looking from this formula, if x is equal to zero, that's where the y-intercept happens. So if we're going completely along this axis and I put zero in for x, x disappears and so does the minus three because minus three times zero is nothing. And I get y is equal to one. So that means that my y-intercept is zero, one. And as you can see from the diagram, that's that point there. And that is the y-intercept. That is where the line cuts the y-axis. So just from looking at the equation of a line, you can tell what the slope of that line is by just checking the coefficient of the x and where it cuts the y-axis. So it'll be at this y-value here. Right? Now remember, it doesn't cut the y-axis at 1. It cuts it at the point 0, 1. Okay, so don't forget to include the x value. For the y-intercept, your x value will always be zero because you're working strictly along the y-axis. But whatever this z value, that is going to be your y value of your y-intercept. So that is what this form of the equation of the line can tell you. Right, why is this important? Why is this important to know? What is the need? Okay, so remember a while back um, when we first looked at slopes, we talked about parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, so just by looking at this and being able to identify what the slope is, we can decide if two lines are parallel or if, or if they're perpendicular or if they're neither. So we said that parallel lines, they have the same slope. So they'll have the same m value in front of the x. Whereas two lines are perpendicular, if their slopes multiply to give minus one. So if the product of their slopes give minus one or equal minus one. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna just fold that over like so. And I'll put it here just as a reference. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. So here I've got six different lines and their associated equations. And what this question is asked me is, which lines are parallel, which are perpendicular? Okay. And remember, the slope is the value or is the coefficient of the x. Okay, so it's the constant in front of the x. Right? You'll notice that each of these equations of the lines, they're all in terms of y. So they're all in this form. So we can tell what the slope is of each one. And we said that parallel lines have the same slope. 
So see here, for example, this line, y is equal to 2x minus 5. And this line down here, so line 1 and line 6, they would be parallel. Why? Because they have the same slope. So line 1, the coefficient of x is 2, and line 6, the coefficient of x is also 2. So that means they have the same slope. They have the same value of m in front of the x. Okay. If you'd like to pause the video now and try and answer for yourself which other lines are parallel and which are perpendicular, go ahead. Okay. And then you can check with my answers to see if you're right to test yourself. Okay. One thing to be wary of, see line 2 here, that has a minus 2x, so you know that has a negative slope. That is not the same as having a slope of 2x, or sorry, as, as having a slope of 2. Okay, one's positive, one's negative. So line 1 and line 2 are not parallel. And before you go getting any ideas, they're not perpendicular either. Because if we multiply 2 by minus 2, we don't get minus 1, we get minus 4. Okay, so just make that very clear in your head. They're neither parallel or perpendicular. Okay, um, any other lines that are parallel? Let us see. So line 3 and line 5 would be parallel because they both have a slope of 6. So line three and line five are also parallel. Okay, and none of the other lines have the same slope. So now we need to focus on which lines are perpendicular. Okay, so which lines, when their slopes are multiplied, are going to give me minus one. Well, if you think about it, in order to get minus one, one of the slopes has to be negative and one of them has to be positive. Because if you're multiplying two numbers together to get, a, to get a minus number, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. If they're both positive, the product will be positive. If they're both negative, the product will also be positive because we've seen before a few times that a minus by a minus gives us a positive. So that means that I need to focus in on line two. Okay, because this is the only line here with a negative slope. Right, so what multiplied by minus two is going to give me minus one? Well, if I have a look at line four, right, so if I have line four has a slope of a half, and if I multiply it by minus two, I get minus one. So if we multiply a half by minus two, we get minus one. Okay, so that means that line two and line four are perpendicular. So if you paused the video and you did it yourself and you got the same answers, fair play. If you didn't, the most important thing to remember to realize is where you went wrong and do you understand now? Okay, and that answers that question. So I'm going to put that aside for a minute. And then we're going to have a look at another question where knowing the slopes and the intercepts come in handy. So this is a question, particularly on the Irish um, junior cycle exam papers and the leaving certificate papers, you'll always see questions like this, where they give you these random lines. They won't give you any numbers normally, they just give you a random lines. 
and they'll give you equations. And you have to use your knowledge of parallel and perpendicular slopes and y-intercepts to realise which ones, which lines correspond to which equations. Okay, so what they've asked us to do here is they've asked us to match each line to its equations. So they've given us four equations here. Again, they're all in this form. So remember whatever's in front of the x, that is my slope. And remember this c value here, that's the y-intercept. Now you'll notice that two of them don't have a constant. These two here, they just have y is equal to x and y is equal to minus x. They don't have a constant. They don't have a c value. That's because c is equal to zero for both these equations. What does that mean for us? That means that these lines must go through the origin. So c equals zero for both these. So their y-intercepts are at the origin. Okay, for the c equals zero, the y-intercept is the point zero, zero. So that means that these two lines must be a and d because they are the only ones that go through the origin right if we focus on oh sorry again i meant to say if you want to pause the video and try this yourself and then compare answers go ahead and um, but i'm going to continue on and solve it now All right so what was it saying there and um, oh yeah so if we look at this line here y is equal to minus x that is the only line here with a negative slope so I know the way it says minus x, but that means that the m value is minus 1, the slope is minus 1. It's just that we don't go writing minus 1x, we just write minus x. Okay, so that coefficient in front of that x is actually minus 1. And similarly, the coefficient of this x is 1. So m is 1. But we just don't, we don't go around writing 1x, there's no need, we just write x. So since this is the only neg line with a negative slope, that means that it must be A, because A is the only line here out of these four that is running down to the right. All the other ones are running up to the right. Okay, so let me see. Um, where is my green marker now? There he is. That has to be line A. Okay, and we said that this line here also cut through the origin, so by process of elimination, that has to be D. Okay. So we've A and D accounted for. Okay, D is this one here, it's going, it has a positive slope and its y-intercept is zero, zero, which is the exact thing here. And A, we said a negative slope and its y-intercept is zero, zero. So it's that line there. Now we have to figure out which of these last two lines is B or C. Now the slope doesn't tell us much in this case because they're parallel and you can clearly see from the diagram that they're parallel. So that would have given it away if you didn't know how to start with the first two that we looked at. Right, so we need to focus on where they cut the y-axis. So looking at their C values. Right, so this line here cuts the y-axis at 0 minus 4. So that cuts it below the x-axis because our y value is negative. Where if we look at this one up here or down here, c is equal to 4. So it's a positive y value. So that cuts the y-axis at 0, 4. Whereas this one up here cuts the y-axis at 0 minus 4. Okay, so if we have a look at b and c, right? B cuts the y-axis when y is positive, all right? Because remember, this is our origin. Anything below that on the y-axis, this is negative y-values. Anything above it is positive y-values. So that means the line B must cut it at 0, 4, because the only other line cuts it at 0, minus 4, which is somewhere around here. Okay, so that means that this line down here must be B. And lastly, that line must be C. And again, if we look at it, right, it cuts the y-axis at 0, minus 4. 
and that has to happen somewhere down here because the y values below here are negative so that must be zero minus four there and that must be zero four there okay so with these kind of abstract questions you really have to draw upon your knowledge of what the equation of a line can tell you about the slope and about the y-intercept okay and again if you got that if you pause the video and you worked it out by yourself and you got that fair play and right the last point of this video is an important point as well so please stick with me here what happens when you are not given the equation of a line as y equal to mx plus c right, so that might sound confusing so i have an example what about this equation of the line here where i have 3y minus 6x is equal to 2. that is still a valid equation of the line but it's just not in the form that we like we cannot tell what the slope of this line is or where it cuts the y-axis by the form it is in at the moment okay so what do we do okay and again if you want to pause the video and see if you can work this out yourself i absolutely encourage that right but if you don't want to do that if you're kind of stuck follow with me here so what we're going to do is we don't like the way this is at the moment it doesn't tell us anything about the slope or the y-intercept so we're going to rearrange this using the balancing method which i did a video on way back when in order to get y by itself and equal to something times x plus a constant okay i'll show you what i mean exactly by that now so see here i'm going to get y on this side and everything else on the other so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to add six to both sides or add six x to both sides right and the reason i'm doing that is because minus six x will cancel with six x and i'm left with three y is equal to two plus six x what I'm going to do next is I'm going to divide both sides by three because remember we don't want to know what three y is that is no use to us we want to know what y is in terms of x and a constant okay so we just want y by itself so that leaves me with y as I wanted is equal to two over three can't really simplify that so leave it plus 6x divided by 3 that's equal to 2x okay and then for the sake of the form i'm just going to swap the order of these two because i can do that that doesn't change the equation at all so y is equal to 2x plus 2 over 3 okay and again if you get a fraction that's totally fine that just means that your y-intercept isn't happening on a whole number it just means it's happening somewhere in between 0 1 or 0 0 and 0 1 so it's just happening at 0 2 3 so that's fine but now we have it in the equation that we like so I can tell immediately that the slope of this line is actually 2 and it cuts the y-axis at 2 over 3 or 0 2 over 3 okay so if it happens that you're given what looks like a random equation with y and x in it and you're asked to find you're told it's the equation of the line and you're asked to find the slope get it in a form that you like just rearrange it using your balancing method you're completely entitled to do that in maths as long as you use the balancing method and you keep it balanced as you rearrange okay so get it in terms of y get y by itself and then the rest will become clear and then you can have it in a form that you know how to use okay so Probably the most important thing to take from this video is this form and to remember that the coefficient of x is the slope of the line and that your constant is the y value of your y intercept. Okay, so it's zero, the y value which is a constant. Okay, and remember as well, it has to be in terms of y, not 3y, not 2y, not minus y, not a million y. Okay, that's the most important thing to take from these and um, from this video.